Hello fellas, Frankie Day here. Okay guys, this is Friday afternoon. I'm sitting here working on the monocoupe still. And uh, the topic of the video is, I guess video two of the monocoupe on the fly. Okay, before we get to Mr. Mono over here, we're gonna, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for your great uh, comments and views on the last blackout video I had. That was an unusual video, fellas. That was me kind of out of character a little bit. Something different you don't see every day on YouTube. But like I say, it was such a boring night with no electricity on, nothing like that. So I had to do something. So the only the only power that I had at the time was the battery inside this cam camera right here. And so I thought, what the hell? I'll make a video and let these guys know how it is when it's all dark outside. <laughs> okay, guys. Um. They didn't restore the electricity until about 11.30 Thursday morning, late morning. So I was out of electricity now for probably, oh, good grief, uh, probably a little over 24 hours. And uh, it got to the point, it got so hot in the house after I made that video, guys, so there ain't no way I can go to bed. So I, I got my wife dressed and everything. We took off to my daughter's house and let my... And we stayed over at my daughter's house until they turned on the services. And the time I got home, uh, I got home probably around 10, 10.30, 10, uh, around 10.30. And uh, it was still hot in the house. I had a, I got home and uh, before, I, before I got uh, picked up my wife and brought her home, I had a... Oh, Jesus. Well, I had a shit can, probably about almost a grand, almost a thousand dollars worth of frozen meat. That was in my deep freezer I had in my in my kitchen, and uh, boy, was I pissed. I was, I was steaming, steaming, spitting fire, yelling. All, all because of something stupid like that, I had to hit my darn, hit the power pole and cause a blackout and cost us money. When I found out my calculations were correct, I ran into Officer Bundy. And uh, all the police in Moraine City here in Ohio are very courteous police officers. And very, because they know we're older folks, we live in an older community. And uh, it's very nice of them. And, uh, um, and well respected that they come and check on check on us elders, see how everything's going. So Officer Bundy came to the house and said, Hey, Frankie, how you doing, buddy? I said, I'm pretty good, dear sir. I said, Hey, what gives the blackout? I said, What the hell happened? I heard it was a wreck or something. Anyway, that was a wreck, all right. That girl right there, I was, I was parked doing my paperwork, and I seen her doing making a, a selfie on a cell phone. I was watching her, and she was going left to center. I seen two cars had to swerve out of the way, keep them hitting her. And as she quit making a selfie and quit fooling around with her cell, her iPad or her cell phone, what you call them, I don't have none of those things, fellas. Anyway, uh, when they, she got done farting around with that, she finally got her collections again. And said, oh my God! And went over. By the time she she swerved out of the way, she hit that that pole right there and bust that pole off in the bottom of the base. And the whole pole went down, took out the chance bomber, and took out about 180 houses out here. So we got a 24-hour blackout, and she got citated for um, uh, reckless operation and also distraction. And I don't know why these they don't enforce the, the, the cell phone law. You cannot talk on those things, fellas, you know, and, and drive on vehicle. My God, you know, like I said in the blackout video, these, these, these automobiles don't have brains. I mean, they're, they're mechanical pieces of machinery that's manned by is manned by the human brain. When the human brain, when the human factor is not in the equation of driving a vehicle, something's going to happen. It's going to be out of control. That scares me. So anyway, she had me for minutes for that, and I suffered and lost a lot of food. We had to throw away almost about thousand dollars worth of good good uh, frozen meat, and I throw, had to throw away a couple of gallons of milk. I had to throw away a bunch of stuff in the ice box and and what was perishable was still good it was refrozen again and uh, so there ain't gonna be no reimbursing of damages because of what happened guys it's just one of those things that happened so I had to got my check yesterday and I had to go down to the air uh, right pad Air Force Base to the commissary 
and I had to get me some more groceries at the uh, commissary. And uh, so I, I picked up about six hundred dollars with a with a meat and bought some food out of there and uh, put down a layaway for a generator down there at Harbor Freight. So two weeks now and I'll go pick up a generator. It'll be parked out there in my in my garage. When something like this ever happens again or an outage, I got power. This is something I should have foreseen a long time ago, but I didn't think about that much. So you gotta be prepared, guys. So you gotta prepare yourself for the eventuality. And if you don't prepare, you'll pay for it. And I did too. Okay, that's all aside, guys. I'd like to thank everybody out there for your, your wonderful views on that blackout video and comments and everything. And and uh, truly sorry I had to make a video like that with, with can my candlelight. And uh, it was something different. So that's all over with. That's down there. That's a whole different avenue. Right now, we're on the right road right now. Okay, guys, this is the number, video number two for the uh, monocoup on the fly from Mr. Jim Bear. Okay, guys, I, I was delayed and detained because of the blackout. I couldn't get, I fell behind this. And uh, post, bring, up my, uh, bring up my beach craft over there. I'll have her next coming up, guys. I So far, thus far, I got the, um, the wing strut, uh, the left, uh, the, the port wing strut. On the wing, wing's been joined, the bottom of the wing has been covered. All I gotta do, all the covering I do last is gonna be on the top wing. And like I, like, uh, like I mentioned, I think on the uh, blackout video, as I can't cover the top wing until the, the instance of the wings are secure with the wing strut. So I got the, the port wing secured using the wing strut, and I'll show you as we bring the video over. Okay, guys, here she is. There's the Model Coupe 90A, 1944 Model Eagle Model Company plan that I built this thing from. And I've got the wing strut right here. And the wing strut has got to be adjusted underneath the wing mounts of the wing. Because you've got to adjust your, adjust your instance. Now this wing is secure. Ain't going nowhere, guys. This thing is locked in. Along with the Clark, uh, along with the, uh, this don't have a Clark White airfoil in it, like, as to the Dumas kit I have. We just had a regular spar, a bottom spar, main spar, and top top stringer spar, and uh, so just enough to keep the tissue over from from uh, uh, belling over between the ribs. So you got to adjust the instance on the wings, secure your struts. This thing is strong; it'll go nowhere. I can cover this thing without fears of warping the wing. Stubborn wing gonna achieve the same. I've got the uh, strut here. This strut right here. I sand down quite well, and I got caulkings on here on the side of the fairings on here, which fit underneath the wings as, as they go up in this position. As you can see right here, how the I use that filler for caulkings on there. So I let that dry, sand well, put a little sand on the sealer, sand again, install on the starboard wing. Once that that's all done, paint same. That's all done. Lastly, I'm going to cover the wing. Go ahead and mark the, the control surfaces by using uh, the old Sharpie method and a straight, a straight edge ruler. And I got to put the skyline on here. I got to open up the motor peg holes. I got to apply the tail skid. Lastly, make a thrust button. Again, I'm using 132nd plywood. This will fit back a thrust button. And I'm going to go ahead and make a, a thrust adjuster. On there for Jim. All he has to do is put eight pans of rubber in the thing, adjust his thrust how he wants it, and head for the hills. Uh, this thing is balanced perfectly. I think with the weight of the, uh, the balsa block on the nose and the spats, it's kind of brought the center of gravity spot on. And I took it out the, uh, this morning. I have a little breeze out there. It's not too warm today. It's, it's warm, but not as hot as it has been. And there's a nice breeze out there. I just want to check the give it a little wind tunnel test. I kind of I held it on with my hands right there. You, that thing just wants to lift. So like I say, it's got a high wing right here, a high wing loading, and this thing will it'll it'll soar to the clouds, no sweat. Uh, it's engineered for eight eight strands of rubber, and no more, no less. And um, 
It's going to get it quite well, Frank. I mean, uh, excuse me, guys, good fellas. And uh, you can see the bottom wing all done and the strut, how the strut's mounted on there. I painted the red on the valve covers. And uh, of course, you can see the pin light trim on there like this. On top of the wings, there'll be these big old scallops on here. Same thing on the leading edge of the stabilizer and the rudder. And by using this again, as I mentioned her on the last video, I got me a prop blank. I'm going to cut out this piece of solid balsa wood I got right here for the Hobby Lobby. I'm going to draw out a prop, a prop blank using for the plans of Vern Clements' 110 monocoupe plan, 1 8 scale. I'm going to put a prop blank on that, cut it out, carve it, use it for the peller on this. As far as I got, fellas, it's uh, it's going quite well. I'm very I'm very happy with this machine, and uh, she goes together quite well easily. And uh, and uh, not much building this job here. Only bad thing about monocoops, guys, is that they have one hell of a a bend on the fuselage. Then as it goes forward, it, it goes out real skinny from the larger rods from the aft of the fuselage jeppage. And it goes up and it stumbles up and it really comes back in. So you gotta be careful, you don't want to snap none of these um none of these balsa lajeras. So the best thing to do with that is you gotta soak into those lajeras before you you bend them in securely up against the firewall. All construction of balsa kits are pretty much the same and some are different. This kit here is a nineteen forty four plan. It used to be a kit of this one time. I think it cost about a quarter back then. I remember seeing it when I was a kid. I bought an L14 one time. Uh, from Eagle Model Company. It was 1944 plan. And I think I built that from about 1954, 55, somewhere around there. And I think the I bet the kit cost me a quarter back then. The same same size as this with a 40 inch wingspan. So back in those days, uh 25 cents went a long, long ways. As mentioned on the blackout video and even on the uh, Dumas uh, beach guy video, hell, years ago when I was a kid growing up, hell, give a guy two bets, man, for a god darn, was a quarter back then. You, you go to a movie, you buy yourself some popcorn, coke, coke, and go next door and get yourself a, a little toy or something for a nickel or a dime. And uh, if you don't like not to, just save the change and go to the, go to the movie, do it all over again. And, uh, so, and uh, of course, plastic models back then ranged anywhere from 29 cents. Uh, the most expensive model back in those days was uh, 4.95, and five dollars back in the early 1950s was a lot of money. Five dollars, five dollars back in the, in the, in the er, early 1950s is equivalent to 50 dollars today. That shows you the value of the mighty dollar has really gone down. And the and the inflation of it's going up, so in layman's terms, it takes lots and lots of money. So, back in those days, a penny was a penny, and a dime was a dime, nickels a nickel, a quarter, fifty cents, and a dollar was a dollar. And you bought a lot back then. I remember one time you could buy nine burgers for a dollar. I remember one time you can uh, buy a big old steak dinner about two or three inches thick, probably about. I would say maybe the tip of my finger is probably about eight or nine inches. Two dollars. Two dollars for a big steak dinner. And uh, people, I tell people that work, people say, wow, I wish I lived back in those days. It's a shame you didn't. Because at least back in those days, everything was rash. Nowadays, it, the, this whole world's like a fruitcake. It's upside down. And everything just, it's just messed up, guys. And, so I guess the good Lord in heaven is going to straighten things out. It's like those saying, you'll take care of your affairs, somebody else is going to. The man upstairs will take care of it. A lot of people ain't going to like it. It's too bad. We're all responsible for ourselves and each other. And uh, so when responsibility turns into a singular situation of, being, of individualism, you're going to have, uh, that's the problem we have today in this country. Here's that for number one. Okay, guys, talk about number one. This is going to be a number one deal if they get this thing finished up. I get that uh, next video is going to be on Beechcraft 18. I this is kind of a little video here. Let you know, guys, are still alive and what happened with everything and the update of the uh, monocoupe. Okay.
Okay, we're gonna swing and sink around yours truly right here and finish up the video, guys. Okay, guys, um, while it does stay here dry, I wanna go ahead and, um, and do some cleanup right here in the shop. I gotta get back here, get a few models boxed up, taken down below. I gotta vacuum this deck and, uh, clean up all the stuff. I've been cleaning up models. I've been cleaning up models all day long. I've got this D25 over here, my Mitchell. Ted Lawson's uh, ship, the, the ruptured duck right here. I I got this thing completely all cleaned up real well. This thing was dusty as hell, guys. It took you half an hour to clean this thing up. This thing is about as clean as it was when I first uh, when I first built it. And, um, so anyway, guys, I got this, got the Mitchell all done here. Got it all cleaned up. I'm cleaning up all the models down here. I got some special boxes I, I dragged down the closet. And I'm going to go ahead and, uh, box these things up and get them sent off, get them down below. And, uh, it's out of harm's way. Stash pile is excellent because I bought some planks and everything. No more stash pile crashes. I got about two, four, six, eight, twelve models I'm gonna get down below the basement all boxed up. Vacuum here, clean up my workbench and behind me. This is a, a mess back here, guys. It looks like a bull went through a china closet. I just gotta get that scored away behind me and get this big old building board down. And uh, finish up mono and get uh, get a video going on the on the uh, beach craft. And uh, I'll get, I'll turn to you back on the Norsky Love and get her shaking. I'm getting falling behind on that. Between two back-to-back -back paydays, paying bills and buying buying food and everything, which I lost during the the blackout, this kind of kept me away from the model bench. So so far, I worked on this last night and I got off work, and uh, I got that far in the model coupe, so she's on a downhill slide being done. So I only that wing stuff to get done when when it dries. I'll sand well, sand the sealer, sand again, and paint, and uh, I'll go ahead and. Uh, Proceed with the rest of the covering and uh, finish up the painting. Put the celluloid on the windshields and and then make the thrust button. And uh, here you go, Jimbo. Here's your Monogroup 90A. Enjoy, buddy. Eight strands of rubber weighs five ounces. That's all you need. Eight eight strands of three sixteenths rubber, well lubed for lubricating. Grislin, Armor All, the special stuff I bought. At Penn Valley Hobby Shop online, this is like a glycerin, like a like a soap. Keep that rubber good and lubricated, guys. Once it's good and lubricated, you get a lot of motor runs, and plus lots and lots of less breakage. Don't know exploding rubber inside your airplane. Another tip too, guys, on these rubber power jobs, especially with coconut scale up the jumbo. Always get a nice little a small cardboard tube, very light tube. That's called a blast tube. Okay, so we stretch out that rubber and start cranking that rubber, ringing that rubber, and that rubber goes boom! And that at least it'll blow inside the tube instead of inside the airplane and bust out and blow out your whole fuselage. Pretty soon you find out the tails where the propeller's at. So you don't want to go there. Okay, guys, this is Frankie Day signing off. God bless you guys and happy modeling. Please subscribe. And I'm honored each one of you fellows out there. You guys are the greatest guys in the world. And, and also a special thing, uh, a, a special welcome back to our wonderful Mr. Martin Lamont. Uh, the, the, the fine gentleman, he had a, he, he had a, a kidney stone, and, and, and thank Christ that was it. So something else going on because uh, my wife and I prayed for him that night. And I know you guys prayed for him too. He's a very wonderful fella, and uh, so we all got to take care of each other here in this model community, guys, because we're like a family here. We all chewed up the same plastic together, and we all shoved up the dollars to keep it going. And and this stuff's not cheap, guys. You all know it is. So special. Uh, Get well and welcome back to you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Martin Lamont. You're a great fella. And take it easy, buddy. And happy modeling. I'll have that tippy. I have some more tippy going on. It's, it's still young. So i got to get that shaking. Okay, guys, I'm out of here. I'm not jabberwocking right now, so uh, it's time to get out of here. i got to get turned to this God drawn man cave because this place is all scored away. Okay, guys, I love you guys very much. You guys, take care, fellas, and God bless you guys. And uh, happy modeling. Make mama happy. And uh, see you later. Bye, boys.